Hello everyone, this is Jotto and welcome to Versus Series, where a member of my team, Ace Breakers, plays against a well-known or up-and-coming pro player. Now for this week, we have Spiffy from Ace Breakers, who is uh, one of the new recruits to the team. Very, very fortunate to have him on the team, and we will see what he can do this week. And he will be playing against Pudding from Team Karazi. Now, before we start quickly, I am in full streaming schedule mode right now. So, every week I stream on Monday, Wednesday, and Sunday at uh, noon EST, which I guess will change come daylight saving time, and I'll keep you guys updated for that. Keep in mind, daylight saving time is ending on Sunday. For anyone who doesn't know, don't be an hour early or and or late for wherever you're going. But anyway, without further ado, let's get started, shall we? Okay, so, first two decks here, we have uh, Spiffy, who has brought his Druid deck. Now, this particular Druid is, in fact, playing double combo, but what makes it interesting is that there's a lot sort of push and pull, where there's the double combo, but then there's Ancient of War on the top end of things. Uh, Black Knight is also very, very good in the double combo decks, but no Sylvanas in exchange. On top of that, we do have one Azure Drake, which is something that uh, a lot of people haven't been playing recently, but uh, as one Azure Drake and a Chillwind Yeti, along with the Big Game Hunter, because realistically, if you're going into a show match and you're not planning on banning Warlock, you kind of want a Big Game Hunter just in case someone brings Handlock. Uh, which reminds me, the bans for this week were Spiffy banned Hunter and uh, Pudding banned Warlock. So we will not have any zoos. Zero zoos, which is nice because we had a 3 0 zoo. <laughs> so, zero zoos will be had this week. But anyway, as for putting, he is playing a priest control deck. Now, this particular version is playing the Ysera as the win condition, which a lot of people have been leaning towards. Uh, also, one Shadow Madness, some people have been running two. One Shadow Madness, one Silence, one Holy Smite. The removal package seems to be a bit of a toolbox, where there aren't that many two-offs, but there's a lot of one-offs. One Holy Nova, one Holy Fire, one Shadow Madness, one Smite, one Silence. The only thing that's really a two-off is uh, Circle of Healing along with Organized Soul Priest. Uh, that will do a four damage to the entire board. Uh, other interesting additions to this particular deck is the Double Cabal. Now, I quite like Double Cabal Shadow Priest. A lot of people have been running one, though, so it's interesting to see, uh, see that he is, in fact, running two. So anyway, we'll go on to game one. Now, unfortunately for this week, I didn't have both videos. Something went horribly wrong with Pudding's video. It's kind of unfortunate, but it happened. Uh, but anyway, so basic mulligan there, send back anything expensive. Uh, this hand is okay as far as Spiffy is concerned. Now, yeah, as I said, we don't have the other view. However, while I've got this, I was thinking it would be kind of miserable, but I edited this all out, and I actually quite like it. Uh, so, he's debating the turn one here. I don't think you do. I think you'd go turn three. Can you even afford to go turn one? Maybe. I think you go turn three. Yeah, he agrees with me. I think you'd go turn three. You can't just dump your whole hand in one turn. It's too risky, especially against priests who can just go coin Shadow Word Pain if they're playing it. That'd be really awkward. Basically a three for one. But anyway, so uh, this is my new interface thing. It's not quite finished. There's a couple rough edges here and there, but because um, this is temporary. But in the comment section, could you guys tell me whether you prefer this kind of style or the previous one? And if you prefer this one, then I'll put the hand of the person at the top, like maybe where his hand is as far as your opponent's concerned. Uh, but by all means, go ahead and say something in the comments and I'll, I'll do kind of a general consensus thing almost. But anyway, first couple of turns, pretty basic. We had Northshire, Thought Steel, Innervate Belcher, which we saw. He does also have the turn 5 Ancient Lore, which is very important. Alright, so... There's a couple ranges which uh, Pudding could have here, from Dark Cultist to some sort of Power Word Shield shenanigans. Power Word Shield would be really good here, actually, now I think about it. Power Word Shield, attack him, heal. You essentially draw two cards and uh, end up on four life. But then you could just kill it. Alright, so Cultist coming out here. Which means he's gonna, he's gonna lose his Northshire. 
which is unfortunate for him. In fact, he's going to lose both. That Wrath top deck is really, really good. You can actually just kill the 1-3 with the Belcher and then just Wrath Hero Power the Cultist. That is a very, very good draw for Spiffy there. But anyway, next turn, there is a turn 5 Ancient Allure drawing 2, which can be huge, especially against control decks. Ancient Allure is at its best against control decks, uh, at least in the mid game. Late game, it's really, really good in general, but it does thrive against other mid rangey decks because you just play it, draw, and then they have to deal with it, and it's horrible. Against control decks, getting one out early can be quite important. Oh, we could see an Innervate Black Knight here. Alright, going for the Lower Theb. I think I would have debated the uh, Ancient Allure there. The reason he went Lower Theb is because he doesn't want any Shadow Madness shenanigans going on here. And also, he has a perfect curve coming out of this. So, I mean, if you think, about, if you think of it from a point of view of no Shadow Madness, please, then yes, it does in fact make sense. Perfect sense. That is probably getting Black Knighted. I don't really see a play where he wouldn't. I mean, it does depend what Pudding decides to do uh, towards the end of his turn here, though. That can have a, a very, very large impact. So we'll, we'll see how this particular scuffle goes. Alright, so he didn't have anything. Now, in this case, I think you just Black Knight the 3-4, and then actually I would, uh... Hmm. I think I'd use the lower the... No, I'd use the Sludge Belcher, because you don't want Shadow Madness being a thing. Yeah, I'd use the Sludge Belcher. I think that's a mistake. Uh, the reason is that you could use Shadow Madness on the Sludge Belcher right now. And that'd be really awkward, and it doesn't really stop any Orcanite combos because of the hero power. But no, we'll have to see how this turns out. If he had Cabal Shadow Priest, it's technically better for him if he used the Belcher, but the Belcher token isn't doing much in reality, and the lower third would still be a 5 5, so you could just kill off the uh, Cabal for basically zero board loss. Next turn, Ancient Allure is coming down, which is going to be quite important. Um, oh yeah, something else for this week. I don't have music on in the background. Uh, that's something else which, if you guys give me some feedback on, because um, I did get someone saying he didn't like it. Yeah, there's the madness. Yep, punished for it. Anyway, so uh, I did get someone saying they didn't like it in the background, but I don't know. It seems kind of dead space without it, so I'm I'm a little sketchy on it. But uh, could you guys just please say whether or not you prefer it and if it's a case of liking music in the background, just not that particular one, sending me something which you would like, <laughs> like linking it or something. But anyway, we're going to see Ancient Allure come down here at for sure. I can't really foresee a, uh, another play besides Ancient Allure draw. Yep, straight up Ancient Allure draw. Some pretty good cards coming out from there. Swipe can be super important. It does depend a lot on what he has. This could be a Holy Fire. This could also be a Shadow or Death. I mean, an Orcanite Soul Priest Circle combo would completely wipe the board and then get picked off by a Wrath. But I, I do think that's how he's going to come back since he is quite far behind as of, as of now. Alright, Shadow or Death. Oh, he thought stole a keeper. <laughs> that is a really big deal. Double roar. I think I'd actually wrath to draw a card off that 2-4. Uh, Maybe, I don't know, this is difficult. The obvious play is just kill with the 4-4. Four four. The problem is if you do that, like you don't have any other plays at all. I mean, you could, like, double Savage Roar, but no, that's just terrible. I think Rothing the 
for one damage and then using Keeper and Hero Power on it is the correct play here. Oh wow, Innervate Ancient of Lore. That is really, really big. That was one of the single best top decks I think he could have got. That's really important, getting that second Ancient of Lore here. Some pretty good draws off it as well. I think you kill it. It's always too risky to leave a 2-3 a on the board. I don't know. I don't think I'd be aggressive. The amount of burst in his hand means that all he needs is board position and then he wins. So I don't think I would have been aggressive there. Follow up to this though consists of uh, of Yeti and Shade, which is okay, especially if he just used a board wipe. Shade can get out of control over a time, but I'm guessing this is going to result in the full board being cleared this turn. That's sort of the way I'm looking at it right now. Yeah, full board wipe. They usually don't play the the wild pyro unless there's a full board wipe incoming. Is it going to be one of those things where if he'd cleared it, he would have saved his board? Yes. <laughs> if he'd cleared it, he would have had a 5-1 on the board. But then that could have been a different combination of things. Yeah, swipe Druid of the Claw in uh, cat form. Yeah, I agree with that. That just seemed to be the best play there. But it was, it was a bit awkward that uh, the 2-3 ended up resulting in a very, very efficient trade there. Holy Fire is okay. It basically just negates the uh, the cat, because the cat swung for four, and then he got he and then he got the heal for five, but then there was a swipe as well. So it basically just negated the last turn. Slight bit of indecision there in sequencing happens to everyone. Ooh, Force of Nature. Yeah, I think you go for the shade here. No innervates left in the deck, so you can't just go fun combo combo. That would have ended the game there if he had the uh, the fun innervate roar roar. 22 damage. It's a huge life swing. Uh, and it's something which saw its heyday, and a lot of people have been dropping combos recently. Oh, straight up Ysera. And the smite. He would have been dead if he hadn't had that smite. That's pretty big. Alright, so this is a, a Keeper turn, and then probably Ascension coming down here. Debating some positioning. I'm not sure if positioning actually matters here. But it's always nice to uh, sort of play the I might have some Fury game. Although a deck like this may or may not have some Fury. Some Fury decks usually have Spectral Knights in them. I mean, obviously, we know he doesn't have some fear protector, but it's always something to think about. Now, if this is Ysera Awakens, I think the game is over. Cabal, that's a pretty big deal. Dream? Yeah, Dream. Alright. So, he can swing in for 4 plus... What? 14... 20... 20 damage, you say. At this point, I think you may have to go for Broke. Like, just play Belcher, play Senjin, and then hit him in the face. I think that's what you have to do right now. Hit him in the face with the Shade, get him down to 18, to the point when if he plays, he Sarah Awakens, it kind of... Hinders him. Actually, it doesn't. I think this is really difficult. I would actually consider just playing Keeper and uh, doming him for two. Because if he has Ysera Awakens, he is just dead. Like, just flat dead. Ysera Awakens is game. I think, I mean, there are two ways of doing that. This is the safe play if he doesn't have Ysera Awakens. If he does, then the correct play was to uh, Keeper of the Growth his face and then attack. 
putting him down to 16, and then if he has Sarah Wickens, he's, he's in combo range. Because he takes three more, putting him at 13. And by three more, I mean he can heal himself. Oh, the thought steal. It's always kind of awkward not being able to see uh, see their hand. All right, let's see what he has access to here. Swipe. That was a, a pretty good thought steal one there. Alright, so he's clearing out the board minus the shade. Still coming. Oh, yeah, he, he can't get you, Sarah Wick. What am I talking about? It's a silenced uh, guy. There's so many people right now who are just saying, what the hell? <laughs> That's 14 plus 7. It's not enough. I think you play Druid of the Cat and just attack him with the, uh, the Druid of the Kitty. I mean, in theory, you could just dome him for a bunch here, and then uh, go Cat Roar next turn. The problem is if your opponent has, like, a lot of healing. And you can't attack with the Shade because you don't know whether he's playing Double Holy Fire. Alright, so he's going for it. Alright, he's playing into Holy Fire here. The way I see this is that if his opponent draws something like Sludge Belcher, he can't win. Like, if there's a Sludge Belcher right now, and a heal, he can't get enough damage in. Like, that's... he has to silence it, and then cat, which is 9, and he can't actually deal any extra damage. So, Sludge Belcher is really, really bad right now, if it comes down. Yeah, and there it is. And that's... that's... I think he can get through it. This is still this is still anyone's game. A well played coming out here. Let's see, that's 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 on board. Which means that he can't just silence and dumb face. Okay. Yeah, I think that might begin. He would need to silence. Silence the Belcher, and then play. Actually, no. I don't think you can even silence the Belcher right now. There is a second combo in the deck. But um, I think you'd have to kill the Cabal and then play a Taunt Druid. Which would absorb two guys. Reducing the damage substantially. But he's still really far behind. This is a hard play, though. I mean, I could see silencing the Belcher just so that you can possibly win. Okay. That's basically game over. Uh... He needed 9 mana. So I would not be surprised if we see a Concede coming out here, or a uh, flat just win on this turn. This is sometimes how the combo druids match up with uh, Priest goes in general, where there's always this deciding moment where if the combo kills the Priest, then the druid wins, obviously, but if the combo doesn't quite kill the priest, the priest usually wins. Because the combo is super powerful, the, form, the fun combo, but the downside to it is that you're spending two cards and going fairly all in. Like, you spend your entire turn doing it. Term? Yeah, no, turn doing it. Sylvanas, and then he's just going to kill it. And there's uh, lethal damage on the board by far. So yeah, that would be game. 
That would in fact be the game, as he is one damage off lethal. <laughs> is he gonna put him to one? Go on, put him to one. It's 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 only it's it's only nice to put them to one. That's so unfortunate. One off lethal. I mean, like, if he hadn't attacked with the shade, he'd have an extra damage. Because <laughs> he could have silenced it and then just gone, like, roar again. And hit him, so he would have done one extra damage. No, three extra damage. Oh, he's freaking him out here. He's saying, hmm, well played. But no, no, that is in fact the game. Alright, so that was actually an interesting game where it's the kind of thing where control priests against druids tend to go in a way that the longer the game goes, the more favored priest is. Whereas druid can sometimes just overrun them. And in that particular game, the fact that the druid deck was slower probably hurt it in that particular matchup, but probably helps in other ones. Now, Spiffy is bringing in a deck which has the principle of uh, either go a little bit slower than your opponent or a lot faster to beat them. And in this case, it's a bit slower. This is Warrior Control. Now, this particular Warrior Control list is playing the one BGH because show matches. Uh, it's playing one Iron Cow, which can help out a lot, actually. There's a lot of very, very good death rattles nowadays. Uh, one Brawl. One Faceless, uh, Double Sludge Belcher. Now, the legendaries in this particular deck are Loatheb, Cairn, Sylvanas, Black Knight for the mid-game. And then there are three win conditions in this particular deck. Gromash, Ragnaros, and the Alexstrasza to round out the curve at the top. Each one of those can win the game on their own. Gromash can deal straight 12. Ragnaros just hits for 8 every turn. And Alexstrasza can sometimes deal up to 15 damage, especially against a Priest just with the ability, which puts them in a much, much easier to kill situation. So, keeping that in mind, we are going to game two, as we will see whether Spiffy can make a comeback. Alright. Wow! That is a bad opening hand. Two of the highest cost cards in his entire deck are in his hand right now. That is insane. Oh. Weird glitch there. Sometimes happens in recordings. Oh, it's getting a little weird. We'll hope that clears up. Not much to talk about when no one has anything to play on the first couple turns. Spoke too soon. <laughs> Injured Blade Master. Turn two with Circle. The single most broken three drop in the game is on the board right now, if you include the Circle of Healing. Uh, without Circle, it's not fantastic, but with Circle, it's insane. Two card combo, better than most of a one card combo. I think you actually play the Acolyte here. You need to dig for an Execute. There are two Acolytes in this hand, so playing one is not the end of the world. Mm, Alright, so he's going for the. He's trying to save these Acolytes for Whirlwinds. That's. Whirlwinds are a cool task activates. That's understandable. If he draws Execute, then that's going to be insane. Divine Spirit, no. <laughs> Go on. Divine Spirit, and then next turn, Inner Fire. 18, 18. The Light Shall Burn You. <laughs> Ooh, a Faceless. That could be good. Yeah, he's going to play the Acolyte this time, I think. He needs an Execute. I'm not sure, though. If he didn't play the Acolyte last turn, I'm not sure if he will this turn. That's kind of the weird thing about this. I mean, the other play is being patient and armoring up and then facelessing it or something. <laughs> really? 
really debating whether or not to play that, and he does go for it. I think you do need to play the Acolyte here, because you need to dig further into your deck just to get that Execute. The Execute, if you will. Wrong Axe. <laughs> Black Knight. Alright, so we have a Faceless. I just want to point out that this turn 200 Blade Master has done zero damage. Like, actual zero. And the Black Knight. This is such a silly game so far. There is a giant injured Blade Master on both sides of the board. The four nines. There's a, it's basically a Twilight Drake at this point that can be healed because of the Priest. Which is absolutely insane. I mean, I'm half expecting Thought Steel Execute right now. He can actually use Cruel Task and Fire War Axe to kill off next turn. Oh, wow. Sylvanas? Which. And there's the Execute. So, I think what you may want to do here. Actually, you can clear this board. If you run both of the minions into Sylvanas and then Cruel Task Execute. Okay, no, he's just setting up a board position where Sylvanas can't actually kill anything. Okay, so that doesn't wipe the board. It kind of puts off the problem. It doesn't solve it, but it does mean that you don't often have to... That It does mean that you don't really have to deal with Sylvanas now, and you never know you might top deck an Iron Beacal or something. The board is quite favored towards uh, Mr. Spiffy. However, the major elephant in the room is that there is a 5-5 on the board that steals things. That is now harder to kill. Interesting. Oh, wow. Shadow Madness. It doesn't actually die. Is he going to Holy Smite it? Well played. Well played indeed. Not quite what was planned. Oh, he power shielded so that he couldn't actually... That's... That's kind of funny. Okay, so he's going to take way less damage by doing it this way, basically. Instead of the other way around. Kills off the Sylvanas for free, and you could just go your own Sylvanas here. The problem is playing your own Sylvanas is kind of just a random two-for-one. Not really. Because he could just run his guy into it and then Shadow Word Death. So going for the uh, the card draw here is quite important, especially considering it's running a bit low, and this uh, Acolyte is basically an Arcane Intellect on a on basically it's an Arcane Intellect on a one three creature in this particular situation. Not to mention that if there aren't any direct damage spells in Pudding's hand right now, it's just gonna draw three. <laughs> There could be a silence, that's true. Alright, so he's trying to dig for some uh, for, for a couple answers here. That's something which is quite powerful about North Shire, is the fact you can just run it into a low drop, and then uh, just flat out draw a card for two mana is actually quite important. It's basically life tap. Oh, wow, Pyromancer. Silence? I'm guessing this is getting silenced. Oh my god. Straight up, draw three off this Acolyte. And he can't even kill it. Wow. That is huge. Draw three, play Cairn. A slight mistake on the armor up there, but uh, that was a ridiculous ridiculously bad turn for putting there. He must have had practically no options. And this is what's kind of annoying about not having the hand, is that I would like to know what kind of options he had there, but by the looks of the play that he made, practically none. He had to thought steal for some monsters. So straight up draw three came down there. Oh, lower the B. Well, 
We may just see a Ragnaros. Oh, that could be useful. I mean, Ragnaros, Cool Taskmaster, is quite good here. The problem is, if you use Cool Taskmaster, you don't have an Enrage effect for your uh, Grumash. It may just be better to play Rag here. Like, Rag, Axe, and then use the, uh, use the Axe and the Cairn to kill the 3-5, and then hope the Rag hits the 5-5. Five five. I think I could definitely see that as a play, but there's a lot of different options this particular turn, so uh, we'll see what he ends up coming up with. I mean, a couple of the other options are uh, Sylvanas. Death Spite is not fantastic here, but the uh, if you you could use it instead of the axe to kill one, and then it will just flat out kill the other one. So if he's going Death Spite, it means he's probably playing Sylvanas. Oh wow! I did not see that. <laughs> That was impressive. I did not realize that you could actually trigger death rattle weapons by replacing them. That's a trick which you'd only pick up if you played Warrior extensively. Extensively. I did not see that coming. That was incredibly impressive. I might actually cut that one out and uh, send it over to the... Uh, the guys at 2P press start, but that was that was a really impressive play. That was really good. Anyway, so after that particular play, let's see what kind of follow up his opponent has here because he just lost two guys for one death bite. The Karen is still on the board. It's still kicking. It's still being annoying, and it hasn't even procked yet. It's still a four one. If it doesn't have a silence, it's gonna come back. And four attack minions are a absolute nightmare for priests. Absolute nightmare. Oh, there's the execute. That must have been off thought steel. Execute heal and then Dark Cultist. So he's trying to trying to just wear down this Karen. Oh, we could just see. Rag come down here. Like, when is he going to pull the trigger on this rag? That's the real question. I think you probably want to kill this uh, Dark Cultist off and just deal straight A to the face. The reason for it is actually because if you lose the flip, then. Uh, he can just get value out of his cultist on his turn. But that Ragnaros will start wearing him down, and if he kills this with Shadow Word Death, then there's another win condition as a follow-up. So I would I would say Spiffy is highly favored moving forward from here. You've got a really powerful hand with answers to almost everything, cycling, and there is a Thought Steal which could be relevant. We'll have to see what he gets though. Shadow Word Death? I'm guessing there's a Shadow Word Death coming down somewhere. Shield Block? Alright, Shadow Word Death did come down there. No Holy Smites uh, left in the deck, you already used it. Uh, death Spite means I think you start swinging with this weapon. Oh, he's very conservative with his weapons. I would have thought that because of Death Bite in your hand, you could just start swinging with it and get some damage in, increase his clock a bit, considering how much burst you have in your hand. But he's gonna, he's planning for the long game. I guess the way that uh, Spiffy is looking at this is that he's gonna win the long game, so there's no reason to force the issue. <laughs> now, this is an interesting one. Because 
he can't quite fully clear this board. Not with what he has on, on board, at least. There's too much on the board. Wait, is that lethal? 12, 16... Whoa! Give me some time, man! I was gonna think about that, but no! Spiffy sees it in about 10 seconds! That was really well played, that game. That particular game was actually an example of exactly what I was talking about before the game, which is Control Priest is very, very good because it's slightly slower than the mid-range decks, so you can just get, you can just one-for-one one them, and then you have a win condition, you just win. But against Control Warrior, there was a Rag, and then there was Gromage, and Cairn, and just, it was too much. There was too many win conditions in the deck to, to overpower as far as the Priest was concerned, and he just got run over. Although, that ending was from straight 21 life or something. It was absolutely insane. So anyway, Pudding is responding with the other deck in the format, which is just as slow. <laughs> so this is going to be a long game, is what I'm expecting here. But um, this particular power list is incredibly long. To the point when I've actually edited the, the Kel'Thuzad, Tyrion, Ysera at the bottom there. If you notice this little weird glitchy thing. Because I had to edit it as addition. There was a scroll bar at the side. So anyway... This particular list is uh, running one of Humility, two Aldors, so three of those kinds of effects. The one Shade, the reason for one Shade, not two, is because Shade is really bad against aggro, like really bad against aggro. You want it against the late game decks, but not against the early game decks. It can be miserable. Uh, one Spellbreaker, one Faceless. Harrison Jones is an interesting one. That must be in retort to the Hunters and Shamans. You can often get some cards out of that. Uh, two Kodos are going to be incredibly relevant in this matchup. They can get Armor Smiths, Cruel Taskmasters, Acolytes, all very important. Then there's uh, Karen Sylvanas, Black Knight, which are the, the trio of six drops, which are in both decks. Then there's the trio of five drops, I think. There's no Lothab in that deck. That is intriguing. I would think Lothab is really good in Paladin. Interesting. Playing Harrison Jones over Lothab and Faceless over Lothab is a very, very interesting uh, addition here. So not quite the trio of five drops, which is Sludge Belcher, Sludge Belcher, and Lothab, for anyone who's wondering. Now, as far as late game goes, there's one Guardian, one Lay on Hands, one Kel'Thuzad, one Tyrion, and one Ysera. Toolbox late game we got going here. Also the one of Holy Light. So there's the one of of each of the three ways of healing. And then there are three super late game win conditions to round out the base of the deck. So, without further ado, let's get into the deciding game. As far as Mulligans here, against Paladin, I would actually consider just keeping both Acolytes. He's sending one back. Okay. The reason I say against Paladin is because an Acolyte of Pain completely shuts down the hero power. I mean, completely shuts down the hero power. However, if you have one, you may not need the other. So, I can definitely see the logic for sending that back. But this particular hand is quite powerful for uh, for Spiffy here. He's got the Cruel Taskmaster onto the Acolyte combination. Sludge Belcher and a Faceless, which, while not good now, will be good late game. And while I say, like, it's a very, very powerful hand, even though a lot of it is like 5-drop, five 5-drop. Five yeah, I know, but this is one of the single slowest matchups you will ever see in Hearthstone. This is arguably the two slowest decks in the game. I guess the only one that's slower would be uh, Freeze Mage. But these are two incredibly slow decks, and I, will, I would not be surprised if this game goes for straight up 20 minutes. Uh, so far, we're actually, uh, we're actually up to 40 minutes into this episode, which is the average length of an episode. <laughs> but that's what happens when you have three control mirrors. Now... He did actually hear a power again after uh, after the acolyte. I don't know if I would. Hmm. I'm not sure if I would have actually hero power there because every single hero power you use is a free card draw because of the acolyte. Now, the weird dilemma he has right now is that this cruel taskmaster either denies him a card draw or lets his acolyte die. So, I think he may just armor up and pass. Uh, 
But this is one of those turns where it's like, you, this would happen to you on ladder, and you go, you're sitting there for like a minute, waiting for this guy to armor up and pass, but often there's a lot more to the story than you'd think. Like, the armor up pass was a lot more difficult to uh, decide on there than most people would think. Senjin, I think, comes down here. True Silver is actually a wonderful one in this case, which is incredible. True Silver is normally a straight up 2 for 1. Alright, so he's just playing Death Bite. This is really weird. This is the, you have True Silver, I have Death Bite. You have the best weapon from, uh, from Alpha. I have the best weapon from Naxxramas. Well, the only weapon from Naxxramas. But it is kind of amusing. They're practically the same weapon, just one of them is defensive and the other one's offensive. <laughs> I mean, I think the Whirlwind is far more powerful than the healing, but uh, as far as how useful they are to their respective classes, I think it's about the same. That's my little True Silver versus Death Spike shenanigans there. 4-2 weapons for 4 in general are super good. Now, we may just see a 0 for 1 Death Bite here, which is incredibly awkward. I think we may just see Sludge Belcher come down here. Sludge Belcher and then... Attack? Don't attack? I don't think you attack. That... Yeah, this is really awkward. This is one of the really awkward board states where both decks are so slow that it takes a while for things to actually get going. So at the moment, we're kind of just waiting for both sides to get their decks online. As we see a Kodo as the first major play here, and it's going to get eaten. So yeah, both 5-drops got eaten by the respective 4-drop weapons. And the Acolyte off the top for this Death Bite trigger. That is incredibly good. May even see a Cruel Task come down here. Straight up draw another card. He would have 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 cards in his hand, 10 starting next turn, which could be awkward. I think you armor up here. He needs a way of sinking his cards right now. I think you just armor up and then uh, pass. You could Cruel Task for a card here. It's either Cruel Task for a card, or armor up. I think I like the armor up, because you can Cruel Toss next turn anyway, and uh, all this does is mean that Kodo kills this, but you just saw a Kodo, so the chance of him having another Kodo is pretty low, not to mention you'll be at 10 cards next turn, so the fact that you didn't get that extra card draw, not as relevant. <laughs> I think the Faceless Manipulator Iron Beak Owl combo is going to be incredibly important in this situation. Oh wow, is he is he going for this? He's gonna mill him. <laughs> What's he gonna mill? Cairn! That is huge! That is a card which could do a lot of damage. Like a lot of damage. I think you cruel task the Pyromancer, run the Acolyte into the 1-1, one -one, and then Zenjin. I think I'd rather spend less mana first. I don't know, it depends whether or not he's intending on playing this. Yeah, I think he would anyway. So, slight sequencing error there, but no big deal in the long run. The play would have been the same. Black Knight. Getting value. Second execute means he can use the first one. Actually, you can play Armor Smith, run the 2 2 into the 1 1, armor up, and then shield slam. I think that might be the play. Let's see if uh, Spiffy sees it. Yeah, he does. So he's going to gain an armor off the Armor Smith, then armor up, and then shield slam the 4 5. 1 for 1 ing the 4 5. Well, two for one in because of the Ascension as well. But. So, 
Something relevant, which I don't often bring up in control mirrors, it's important, is the uh, card advantage difference here, where there are nine, there will be, starting next turn, nine cards in Spiffy's hand, and there are currently seven cards in Pudding's hand, which is relevant. So, at the moment, there's a couple things that could go really, really, really badly. Mostly, Ysera and Tyrion, and Kel'Thuzad. All of those three are... I think they just lose him the game if he plays them. Because all, all Spiffy has to do to win the game if he plays one of those win conditions is Faceless, Silence, and then run his Cruel Task into it and execute it. That's all he has to do, no matter what it is. And he's basically just won the game if that happens. I don't see a way of dealing... Oh, wow! Yeah, the game has officially just ended. I think that's game over. Faceless Manipulator, Iron Beak Owl. The Jota Beak Owl doing some serious work here. If anyone doesn't know, Iron Beak Owl is my channel mascot. <laughs> and now, <laughs> thank you for the Tyrion. I will use and abuse this thing. <laughs> and next turn, Alex Straza cutting him down to almost no life, along with an Execute. Oh, what? <laughs> So many Tyrions. <laughs> and the humility. So now we're going to see a Black Knight come down to deal with this one. I think we're going to see Black Knight here. And then uh, probably Cruel Taskmaster on the... Uh... We may see Cruel Taskmaster on the Tyrion. Straight up deal two extra damage. But then if he does that, he can't use it on Bromash. And he's already played one, so you may just want to keep it. The other one is Sylvanas. Keep in mind, and anyone who gets this reference, you are, like, amazing. You cannot uh, execute your own Sylvanas. That is the thing. Something else we could see here is Cruel Taskmaster, Big Game Hunter. Is he actually going to do it? There are no BGH targets in that deck. So he may just go for it. Black Knight, like, if he doesn't Black Knight, it means that he doesn't have it, whereas he does, so he may just get a Sludge Belcher off it. I think using the BGH is the best play here. The reason I say that is because BGH has absolutely zero targets. And when I say zero, I mean zero. There are none. Oh, wow. Going for the Sylvanas play... Interesting. Um, hmm. This is risky. Although, he can assume there is no second silence. This is really interesting. This has put this game into a weird curve, where the Savannas doesn't really cement this board for Spiffy, but what it does do is make this incredibly awkward. He can hero power to limit the uh, chance of him getting Tyrion, but we may just see a million Tyrions. Like, just straight up a million Tyrions. There have been so many Tyrions so far in this game, there's been three. <laughs> this Tyrion, like, that is not the original Tyrion. That is a Tyrion that was faceless by a faceless. It was faceless from a faceless that faceless the original. Is he going for the BGH this turn, then? We could see Lothab come out here and then just go straight up BGH. I don't know. This is difficult. Um, Alex Straza. This is actually something I would consider. Alex Straza, his face, and then uh, execute. And then just hit the face with Sylvanas taking him to 10. But then if he has a quality consecrate, he just wipes out everything. So... I don't think it's worth the risk. Well, when in doubt, get more armor. There is this Cruel Task BGH combo, which he can use on any 6 attack minion. Which, at this point, sums up to Kel'Thuzad. Uh, however, Kel'th getting Kel'Thuzad off the board is critical. <laughs> I must admit, this has to be the single longest living Tyrion I've seen in a while. 
Tyrians usually die on sight. Uh, the reason is because if they don't win the game immediately because they're a 6-6 with Divine Shield, they usually just die on sight. Alright, so what he's doing is he's pushing pushing some damage here. And just saying, alright, so you have Ashbringer, use it to kill my Lothab, but you skip your turn effectively. He can't play Lay on Hands is the main thing here. Because then he could just like trade and then play Lay on Hands and he's really far ahead. Alright, so yeah, he's going to run those two into the Sylvanas and then kill the Lothab with Ashbringer. That part is obvious. The question is, what's the rest of his turn going to consist of? If it is something to do with Kel'Thuzad, it's dying. Sylvanas, you say? This is... Oh, God. Ragnaros, the single worst anti-Sylvanas card in the game. That That's... Yeah, Rag is terrible against Sylvanas. Like, just straight up awful. As uh, Spiffy's checking the number of cards in his deck here just to see how many turns he has before, you know, he just straight up loses. He's going to draw Gromash at some point. So, actually, wait a second. I think what we might see here is he could uh, Alex Straza the face and then Big Game Hunter when he gets stolen. No, that's just weird. Are there any other good plays, though? I don't know. This is a really awkward turn. And I'm... In all honesty, I have no idea what you do here. So, we're just going to see what he goes for. He's going for the play I suggested. I'm not even sure if it's correct. I just think it it's sort of the best way of winning the game from here. It also means that this BGH has a target, while keeping the Quilt House Monster for a uh, a better target known as Gromash. I think if he if he had killed the Zod that turn, the game would be over. Kill the Zod would have resurrected Sylvanas, and that would have been the end of the game. Not even close. But now there's a fighting chance, as we're going to see a Black Knight on the Sludge Belcher, and then a BGH to kill that Alexstrasza, which puts Spiffy back in the fight entirely. This is a really weird game. I have not seen a uh, Control Paladin, Control Warrior match-off that's gone this direction. Lay on Hands is absolutely massive right now, giving card advantage. Drawing three is more important than the life gain, I'll put it that way. The life gain is handy because he was on 15, however, the uh, the draw is what really matters right now. But what it does mean is that he can use up the Ashbringer charge and take more damage. He has, I think he took 14 damage attacking with Ashbringer. It's often the problem with Gorhal, where Gorhal will sometimes just also lose. <laughs> it's almost awkward. I would say Rag, snap Rag, see what you get. He's really hoping for this to hit the face. Let's see where it goes. I mean, if I was playing it, it hit the 1-1. One, one. Nope, it hits the face. Alright, so... At the moment, I would say that uh, Spiffy is kind of on the ropes because he most likely has an answer to this. And the next couple of draws are going to decide this game on Spiffy's end. Pudding basically has everything he could possibly want to win the game right now. He has a full hand on turn, what, 20, I guess, at this point. So, this is an absolutely do-or-die situation for Spiffy. Guardian of Kings. That's a Gromash. That is, in fact, a Gromash. That was the best possible top deck. He does not have lethal though. So he's just going to play out the axe. Armor up. And then it's entirely. This game is entirely dependent. On if there is a taunt. Or. 
if there is a healing card. Holy Light is the last one in the deck. However, there could still be something else here. Harrison Jones coming to save the day. This game is incredibly close. And Sludge Belcher. I honestly have no idea how Spiffy wins from here. Oh, Shield Slam. Brawl. Shield Slam? Not going for the Brawl. Ballsy play. He's trying to get as much value out of this as is humanly possible because he knows that this is his last shot of winning. And the Isera. This is entirely dependent on the next couple of draws. Brawl into Sludge Belcher. Alright, so the game is basically going to be decided by RNG. Which is how some control mirrors are decided in general. <laughs> oh, Mr. Da 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 survives. That's the, uh, the Indiana Jones thing. This is really close. I can't really emphasize that enough. This game is horrendously close. I don't even know what's in the deck still. I think there's a death bite. The death bite will do the damage. Death Spite will close out this game. If he draws it. If. True Silver. Wow. One of the last two healing cards in the deck. Also accelerates his clock drastically. There's the Death Spite. That is the last chance that Spiffy has of winning this game. This game is literally going down to the wire. This is definitely one of the single closest games we've ever had on Versus Series. I mean, there's been a couple really close games that we've had, but this is this is insanely close. The entire game comes down to, does he have the Holy Light? There are no more taunts. No more taunts left. Only one heal. Two cards left in deck. Does he have the Holy Light? Yep, looking at those two cards. Kel'Thuzad into... Spiffy wins! <laughs> oh my god! That was insane! That was such a close game! I have not seen a game that close in ages! <laughs> Out of cards indeed. Swinging in for lethal here. That is insane! Wow! That was one of the most crazy games I've seen in a very long time. That was a really good series, I think, looking back on that. None of the games were stomps. If you really think about it, the first game came really close. Got him down to one life and could have gone down to two once or twice as well. Second game, dragged on quite a lot. A lot of sort of beating backwards and forwards, a bit more a standard game. Third game, literally came down to the last card. Literally the last card. Death Spite was the only way he could win, and if there was any way past that, he would have lost the game. That was a very, very good game. And very, very good one to close the series out. So Spiffy takes it 2-1 uh, against Pudding. But anyway, before I close out, uh, what do you guys think of the format? Like the, the UI thing? Uh, I'm not sure whether I'll keep it. I did it because I didn't have both feeds this week. So I kind of edited it out and put it on the side. However, if you guys actually prefer that, I'll just edit it further. And then put like a hand in for the second person. We can get views on both sides. So by all means, go for it. Uh, but I can definitely use that as sort of my new overlay if you guys would prefer. Uh, the other thing was music in the background. Yes, no, if so. It, like, if yes, then what would you prefer? 
because I'm kind of getting both sides of that, so we'll have to see how that particular one goes. But anyway, as for now, this has been Jotto. If you like the content, please subscribe. If you have any feedback, put it in the comment section below. If you'd like to catch me playing at some point, I do stream on Monday, Wednesday, and Sunday at noon EST. That's uh, Eastern Standard Time, also known as Eastern uh, Coast, as far as US is concerned. And that was one of the longest versus series episodes I've done in a while. Three control mirrors, what do you expect? But as for now, this has been Jotto, signing off.